Mashid Nawaz is one of the bravest people on Twitter, relentlessly telling the truth no matter what the response is. Dallas, he'll be bounced off of there at some point. But in the meantime, he's, by the way, a broadcaster and a journalist. Uh, we are grateful to have him join us. Thank you so much um, for coming. So Pleasure. You, you've said from the very beginning, I mean, you were against Putin, strongly against Putin, you know, for years because of other conflicts in the, in the Middle East. So your bona fides as an anti-Putin guy are, are, you know, have no blemish. Well, You're pointing yeah, out the Thank truth. you for starting with that, Tucker, because let me make it absolutely clear. Yeah. Uh, during the Arab uprisings, and in particular with regards to Syria, there are videos of me online speaking about Putin in terms that people, I'm sure, today uh, uh, would hope that I continued to do. So anybody that wants to accuse me of being particularly close to Putin can find those videos. I've, uh, I have criticized Putin probably to a wider audience than many of my critics today have done so. And that's, uh, that's for Putin. But that's very different to uh, what I think is happening in Ukraine, as you touched on, and uh, where I stand on that. And I think, actually, uh, we're being led down a garden path. We are, uh, we are being pressured through intense propaganda led by our uh, governments uh, to uh, not to question what's going on and to see this in purely good versus evil in Manichaean terms and to accuse anybody that tries to look at the gray in between as being somehow a Putin apologist. But if this is a war being fought over principle, and I'm happy to believe that it is, freedom versus tyranny, black versus white, et cetera, et cetera, then why wouldn't our leaders care if the guy who's running Ukraine declares himself all powerful and bans all opposition to him? Why wouldn't that bother them? Well, I exactly. And, and I think, first of all, I don't think it is a war uh, on principle when it comes to the reason our governments are involved. That's different to right. why we, on principle, would support the Ukrainian uh, people. Uh, but ultimately, we've got, to, we've got to ask this question that you've got a country led by a man uh, who, even before the war, Axios, uh, The Guardian, uh, the Atlantic Council, all of them were reporting that Zelensky, even though he ran on an anti-corruption ticket, uh, has, through the uh, Panama Papers and other such leaks, uh, has stashed his millions offshore like most corrupt oligarchs have. And so even before the war, his corruption was known. And then you fast forward to what he's done over this weekend with the banning of 11 opposition parties. And I want to note at this stage that uh, he banned these opposition parties, including, as you mentioned, Tucker, the second largest in his parliament, while the Nazi elements, and I use the word Nazi, not neo-Nazi, because these are actual Nazis that aren't neo in any sense. They're the continuation of Nazis as we know them and study them in history. Uh, and Bandera, the man that they uh, revere, uh, was actually a Nazi, and they made him into a national hero and icon. The Nazis in Ukraine have not been banned uh, by uh, Zelensky. And so this is a very interesting point, that you've got a man that's, uh, that we're hailing as a democratic icon who's fighting for freedom and democracy in our way of life, banning all opposition parties, controlling the, uh, through the state the media narrative, while refusing not only to ban Nazis, but having, after not banning them, incorporated them into his state as of as a battalion formerly serves in the Ukrainian National Guard. Now, people say to that in response, yeah, but Majid, there are racists in every country. No, the analogy here is, imagine Tucker in America, the KKK had a formal battalion in the US military. That's what we've got with swastikas and Nazi insignia inside uh, the Ukrainian army. And then people would say, well, what do you want to do? It's, they invaded, Putin invaded their country. Of course, they have to fight. And I find this line of argument absolutely absurd because the best analogy is with Syria. Now, uh, Putin, def uh, allying with Nazis in Ukraine to defeat Putin is as absurd as allying with ISIS in Syria to defeat Putin. You've got an extremist, an armed extreme terrorist militia known as ISIS. None of us ever had any moral difficulty in understanding that Assad was a dictator, that Putin's support for Assad was wrong, but the people opposing him, the jihadists, were also wrong. Why can't we have that moral complexity when it comes to Ukraine? And, and keep the UK, and particularly the United States, my country, free. If you're for freedom in Ukraine, you can't try and shut down honest questions in this country or punish people for telling the truth. It's super simple, I would say. You are telling the truth. I'm grateful that you are. And Godspeed as you do.